So this is something that I had kind of been dreading to redo for a while. Many of you have probably seen my previous Byzantium videos. And of course, to get Byzantium, you have to start as Greece. But I, I really just wasn't looking forward to doing this because it's been done so many times now by so many different people. So I got to thinking, what can I do differently that might be novel and interesting that people might want to see? I know the last strategy that I did for Byzantium, it still does work, but it, it's a little bit more difficult. You have to start building ships right away. You need to build some planes to get that naval superiority so you can get that naval invasion off to trap the Turkish troops. That was the biggest issue that I saw people saying that they had. There's also the issue with Lend-Lease. I know you can get Lend-Lease from Peru, Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, some of the nations that start out with that brown ideology. The old strategy is definitely significantly more difficult without Italy just handing out goods like it's no big deal, like it's candy on Halloween. This is your last Halloween! But anyways, what we're doing here, we're actually going to be creating Byzantium, but in a way that no one has ever done it before. In this one, we're going to be doing Communist Byzantium. Strap in guys, this should be fun. So let's get started here. So right off the bat, we're just going to be grouping our troops, get all 13 together. There is one caveat. We do need something in particular to happen. We're going to get a guy called Eleftheros Venizelos. We don't want him. We want him to pass away. I know that's rather morbid to say, but we do need that to happen. He will make a return at some point, and at, right now he is in exile, but yes, he will be coming back to us. And we're going to get production basic machine tools. I guess we'll build some of these. We'll, we'll build at least one of these first, and then maybe we'll get started on that destroyer hall. But we're going to start out building mills immediately, and we'll do something like that go ahead and get them exercising. We're going to do devaluating the drachma and we do have the king under house arrest. That's very important as well if you do want to go down that left Byzantine route. The Venezuelists are back. They did win the election. Basically in these first two months is when we need this guy here, Eleftherios Venezuelos. We need him to pass away. He gives us 15% war support, and we don't want that. We need our war support under 10%. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring home the exiled Republicans. Uh, we're also going to start paying off the debt to the British. We'll do that, and we're going to do improved worker conditions. Our stability is going to be very low this game, so we do want to get that up as much as possible. Okay, so it wasn't in the first two months, but I think this is actually close enough. I think we can roll with this. Eleftherius Venizelos passes away. Greece owes you a debt it will never be able to repay we do lose some stability from this and then we get themistocles sephulis becomes the leader of the democratic party so ease up conscription 120 days if we do not complete this within 120 days we will lose 10 percent stability and we will gain 10 percent of communism support so at the moment our communism support is 15 percent we're going to need this over 60% to actually be able to do a referendum. Electronic engineering is done. Next up, we're going to be getting the most important thing for this run. We are going to get truck research. We're actually going to be making a template of 6.3, I think, template is what it ends up being. Uh, very, very powerful. It gives you a lot of mobility without costing very much. You can get a lot of soft attack from those motorized artillery units, and then the trucks themselves even have decent stats as well and you can really really get a lot of punching power for a very very low cost so that's what we're going to use this game it will help us to entrap the turks so you could use this with a more traditional byzantium strategy as well where you're not going communist but of course in this one i am going to be showing you guys the communist run so i did try out some paratroopers i tried getting the naval superiority like we did traditionally to then invade this tile here alexandropolis or to use the paratrooper and the paratrooper was a bit RNG. Sometimes some of them would get shot down in route to the landing, and then sometimes they'd even have troops here. So I didn't like that. I wanted something that would be more reliable, and making this motorized artillery and motorized template to then be able to just quickly move in and overrun the units, destroy them, move back, let them come in again, rinse and repeat. It really just works so well. All right, bring home the exiled Republicans is done. Compromise with the monarchists is next. And once we get that, we get a nice thing that we can do. We can actually take Ionis Metaxas at this point. This guy is very, very powerful.
powerful, you get an extra 5% factory output and that political power gain. I really wanted to rush this because once you get compromised with the monarchist, he becomes available. And that to me is incredibly important because political power is a very hard thing to come by, especially for this run. So after that, we're going to be going down the force the farmers into factories route. We'll get down to encourage tourism. We are going to do Greek autarky, expand our tobacco industry, and then do encourage tourism. And then at that point, we will then do fiscal responsibility and the bedrock of bulk financial stability. And this one's really nice. I found that it's actually better than this route, as long as you can do this somewhat early, because this one will give you four military factories and four civilian factories at max. This one will give you 13 sieves at max. Unfortunately for this run, you can only get 12 sieves because we cannot increase relations with Bulgaria high enough. But we can improve with Turkey, Romania, Yugoslavia, Albania, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Austria. But we do need to do small debt repayment to the British. There we go, compromise with the monarchists is done, and now we can take Jonas Metaxas. So we will do that immediately, and we're gonna continue doing the debt repayments to the British every time that that becomes available. We do need to get the civilian train and the armored train so we can start producing some of those. It is a little bit negligible because we will be defeating Bulgaria and Turkey at some point and then of course Romania as well. We do get a pretty good amount of trains from those but I, I find that you still do want some armored trains. Armored trains are just so much more chunky and hard to destroy than the regular civilian train and of course if you're not losing too many trains then you're not going to be losing much war support from that and the war support is important it also affects your stability. At this point, I'm just gonna start doing like construction, dispersed industry, and we're gonna improve a bunch of those. We also do want to improve our artillery research and possibly even rush to improved artillery. Now, I think I will just rush into war artillery and then immediately after that, improved artillery. So force the farmers into factories now, and like I said, we're gonna go down to encourage tourism first, and then we'll go down to bedrock of Balkan stability. Force the farmers into factories is done. I'll pay back our debts in bulk next. We do need to make sure these guys are training. I'm also gonna trade this cavalry for the regular infantry. It's gonna be a lot more powerful. All right, and now that we have 20 command power, we can go ahead and take our army defense expert. This guy will stick with us for a long time. I believe we might actually lose this guy if we take him because you need the Republicans to be friendly or loyal and eventually they will not be. All right, so we finished up our debt to the British with all small payments. Now we can do these large payments. Luckily, these only take 30 days and it will actually clear half of the debt rather than 25%. So it is pretty nice. We'll be able to clear the debt with the French and the Italians very quickly. Quick note, you never want to do this increase or mining operations. It is not good at all. It does give you two bonuses to excavation technologies, which this one does not. But this one is just far better. Civilian factories are incredibly important. You get four of them. You only get three mills here. Okay, so now that we have enough sieves, we can actually start doing an agency and then of course we can get some other things too. I'd like to get start on some cryptology so we can get all the cryptology done on Turkey. All right, Encouraged Tourism is now finished up. That does give us a nice bonus until we go to war. Uh, so it does give us a stability boost, political power gain, and negative 5% consumer goods. So now we can start doing fiscal responsibility, then bedrock of the financial, uh, Balkan financial stability, stability. Man, I can't talk today. That's all uh, then we're going to do rejuvenating Athens and crack down on foreign monopolies. All right, so so far we will have about 47% once this next event happens of communism support. The one thing you have to think about, you need to have your war support under 10% to get that event and you need it to happen several times before you take this focus. So this one does give war support plus 5%. That is going to hamper this. Eventually you're going to start getting some events that happen too. Anschluss, the Chinese war with Japan. There's a few other things too that increase the world tension and those things are going to also, as the, the world tension bumps, it's going to bump our war support up as well from the world tension. So it's something you need to think about. However, there is also another thing that we can do to affect. So we can unassign the Georgios Averov as the pride of the fleet. And we will be doing this eventually. Right now, we do need to save our political power for a few things. I think probably around the time of the Japan-China war, that's when we will unassign this. 
if we were not able to unassign this, we actually could not do this type of communism Byzantium run. So we got fiscal responsibility done. Now we can do the bedrock of Balkan financial stability. At this point, we want to start improving relations with some people. So like I said before, we're not going to do Bulgaria, but we are going to do Turkey, Yugoslavia, Albania, Romania, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Austria. As you can see here, we will receive off-map civilian factories for every country in the Western Balkans, the Eastern Balkans, the Northern Balkans, as a high friendly opinion of us. This also applies to Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Turkey. So a check-in with our current civ situation. We have 23% consumer goods, not too shabby at all. Shocked plan is amazing, negative 10% for that. And then we have that booming tourism industry as well. So even on civilian economy, we're looking pretty good right now. Um, we are gonna continue researching construction all these industry bonuses once we get cracked down on foreign monopolies which is in just a few focuses here that does unlock something very nice for us it's this one right here neo ryan neo Ryan. i I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but this one gives plus 15% to military factory construction speed. So I really, really like this one. This one's good too, of course, plus 10% factory output is nothing to scoff at. There's also the electronics developer, negative uh, 7% consumer goods. I think we can hit 0% consumer goods even without that though. So in my opinion, I think this one is the best because it's gonna be help you produce mills, which we are producing only mills so that's obviously a good thing pretty soon too we are going to want to grab the war industrialist and if we can the financial expert unfortunately we will lose this guy eventually if we can grab that financial expert soon we would have a good amount of time to actually utilize him so our opinions are already looking pretty good i will let that roll a little bit longer if you get it like 80 plus that's probably good enough on these nations so i think at that point you probably could just cut it off to save some pp we're all about the bargains and the savings around here so we, we like to be efficient as possible all right so i've got our most basic stuff that we're producing now and i do need to start producing some trucks now that'll be the next thing that we'll do we'll produce maybe two of those and then put a bunch on guns because we are going to need a bunch of guns okay so there we go we got those 12 sieves from that you can see civilian factories from events and occupation is 12 12. So that's perfect. One thing I forgot too, I would like to get the professional officer corps. Let's get rejuvenating Athens next. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab our financial expert and we will do the war industrialist as well. Considering we're producing only mills, this is gonna be very nice. Let's get our general and field marshal assigned. So we'll just do this guy, Nikolaus, and the field marshal that we already have. We can do unyielding defender, and I would really like to get offensive doctrine. Unfortunately, we don't have the command power for it yet. Continue increasing this cryptology. Command power, when you have this low of war support, it's, it's hard to come by. All right, and we got our China war now. So like I said before, we do need to go ahead and unassign this especially before we forget if you forget you'll actually lose some precious time on this because eventually this will pop up enough and then you're going to actually lose this modifier so if you were already 80 days in uh, in this case we're 93 days in we would lose this modifier and then we would have to get our war support under 10 percent and then we could restart that so we don't want that to happen because time is precious here eventually even with this we won't be able to get our war support under that 10 percent mark so definitely do not slack on this, get this done. Boom, so now we're down back to 3% war sport. This is the one game where you're actually sabotaging your own war sport. You, you want your people to be pacifists in this, at least for now. Not, not forever, obviously. Yep, so right there, actually, that would have bumped us up to that 10%. Um, so we would have lost that 93 days of progress. So in this case, we didn't. We are still at 5% war sport. All right, we got our radio interceptions done. I don't really want to mess with much more. I mean, I guess we could maybe get another spy. We don't really need another spy per se though At least at the moment. I'm pretty happy with with this. Yeah, we're looking pretty good 18% consumer goods not bad at all considering we're on Civilian economy so with what Greece started with to where we are now. This is looking pretty decent Of course, we don't have too many mills. We still only have four so That certainly needs to be bumped up and an update on our current communism support We are at almost 57% not too shabby So we actually only need one more of these to happen time for Academy of Athens. We got our armored train So we'll start building some of those 
And next up, let's get construction two. So armored train to the top of the list. We will just put one on that and pretty much have one on that forever. So we're getting a decent amount of tracks now. We will need to bump this up soon. I do really, really want to bump the amount of infantry equipment we're getting. You can see we have a pretty large deficit there. Let's check these out. We have full veterancy on all of these. That's good. And we just need more guns for them. That's all. So let's get all of these guys up here. This is where we're going to want them. We got our 150 political power. It is time for Neorion. Neorion. Ne 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 I don't know how to say it. All right. And we are going to change what this division looks like eventually. Right now, it's fine. We'll just start training it like this. Another thing I am going to want to build and add to my divisions eventually is anti-air. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Especially when we fight Germany, that becomes an incredibly important thing because otherwise we can't pierce their tanks they'll overrun us eventually if we have nothing to stop their tanks with all right academy of athens is done and actually our war sport dipped under four percent i didn't expect that to happen though and i think anschluss will probably happen soon and when that happens of course then everything will be going up we are now officially over 60 percent for communism support so we can hit this now we do not want to though you absolutely do not want to uh, we're gonna wait until we're actually done defeating turkey before we're gonna switch essentially if you did it right now we would then just switch back to fascism anyways so <laughs> there's no point <laughs> after resurrecting the magali idea we're gonna be switching to fascism so we can complete this whole tree you also absolutely need to be fascist to even do this that's part of the requirements. Current ruling party is fascist. That's the only focus that requires this though. But of course we do need to have this done and finished up so that we can revive Byzantium and then we can do the rest of the tree. All right, Anschluss just happened and that super boosted our war support. So now we are completely out of the range of even being able to get if we did not already have over 60% communism, we would have been completely screwed out of it at this point. We're going to continue down the center path here. All right, we do need to take improved worker conditions again. As I said earlier on, stability is an awful, awful thing for us this game. We're just going to be struggling with stability. It's a thing. We'll do our best to deal with it. At least for a while, we're not going to have good stability. All right, so before this dumps out, I'm going to go ahead and change the template. So like I said, you know, we're going to be doing the 6-3 template. Yes, actually, we want 4. Sorry, 6-4. And we're going to add in support artillery, engineers, and let's go ahead and just add motorized recon company for good measure. That will boost their speed a little bit. Really good soft attack, okay-ish hard attack, not great piercing. Good defense, good breakthrough. And that 24 combat width is nice to work with as well. Now you can see we're missing a lot more equipment, but that's okay. Uh, we're still working on all of that. Let's put some more on trucks so that we can boost that. Let's also import some steel. I'm going to do France specifically because we want France to survive for a while. All right, we got one of the events. EEE members plunder foreign owned factory and distribute stolen goods. I'm actually going to choose this first option, which seems really counterintuitive, but there's a reason for it. We will gain some fascism support of 8% but we gain stability rather than losing stability and i like that we need we desperately need stability that will put our base value at 33 percent plus all the modifiers adds up to 46 percent that's a whole lot better than losing five stability there soon we'll be able to take another decision in an event that will also be useful to us now do anti-fascist raids all right so we also need to think about what else we want to take here i like taking this infantry expert and the artillery expert a lot both of these guys are incredibly useful and we have 40 command power right now so i guess let's just do it while we can all right so now we have a pretty good amount of trucks being created we could maybe use another so that we can pump out more after that we probably do want to get some more artillery maybe and then maybe some more support equipment and then after that maybe start on some towed anti-air so we can get a good stockpile of that building these uh yeah we probably need two or three on artillery maybe two on support and then two on anti-air I would say okay so here now that we took the increase in fascism before we're at 10 percent now if we take this now to gain more stability we're going to actually lose six percent fascism so that'll put us back down to four percent and we'll still have a good amount of communism support now you might be thinking like oh we don't have over 60 percent anymore why is that I have no idea some <laughs> it's almost like some sort of hidden thing happens where we lose like 10 percent support for communism but it will come back later i have no idea what does that so let's choose this one 
We now have 57% communism support and only 4% for fascism. All right, we got the cipher completed for Turkey. So next up, I'm gonna do this on Bulgaria because we will be fighting Bulgaria eventually. Our deficits are not looking too bad. We're getting some trains built as well. I think we're in pretty good shape right now. We finally have some excess infantry equipment, which is of course very nice. And we're starting to build out our support infantry research as well. Of course, that's gonna boost all of our infantry attack and defense along with these plus this guy we will have pretty good attack and defense really we do want to save some political power here eventually we'll be able to befriend the communists we'll need 250 for that once we do switch to fascism we will want to click this very quickly soon after that i think at the moment we'll just save up some of our political power for that all right anatolian refugees is done we do want to click this first one the ghosts of the past will not return to haunt us again but doing this is what will allow us to go fascist and then of course to create Byzantium as well. So next up, resurrecting the Magali idea. There it is. Heraclean Convention. And when this pops up to you, you want to click this right away. We want to invite the original Severus signatories. Pause it and click that right away. We do have our first motorized out now. And I think the next one is coming soon. So let's add another one now. And now the convention should end soon and just cancel. Now that I said that, it's taking longer. <laughs> there we go, finally. I don't know why, it, it must be kind of random, but uh, yeah, it took 28 days. So of course, again, pause immediately. No good can come of this. The convention must be canceled. Let it run. It will bypass and then you can instantly do horror and fear and it will save 10 days from that. You get at war with Turkey as soon as possible, so make sure you pause on that. I'm gonna grab all three of our mountaineers now. I'm going to actually use these as a defense. So we want one on Athens, one on Patras, and one on Kalamata. Typically, you'll see the Turks do naval invasions in and around this region. I've never seen them actually do this. If they do, we'll be able to push them out either way. You really don't want them to take either of these though because they'll stop any construction that you have going at the moment and that's obviously not good. We're also gonna be doing some raiding with this Admiral. When the war starts, we'll start him on the raiding in these two regions and that way we can raid whatever troops they send over as well. Now that we have a little bit of CP, let's use some for the offensive doctrine. This is very, very good, especially that org loss when moving. That's huge for motorized because they tend to lose a lot of org when they're moving. If you can combine that with this guy right here, flexible organization, let's go ahead and just grab that now because that division speed will help us with deleting the Turkish units. So that's obviously going to be good. And then it also increases that org loss when moving by a further 15%. Those combined together add up to 45%. Very, very strong. And there we go. The EEE launch a coup. We're going to say we must answer for our fifth failures and boom we now have this guy here Georgios Cosmetis that justify war goal time is going to be highly useful for us and then of course political power gain Bulgaria next we do need to justify a war goal against them it's 160 days you get 60 days after that of grace period in which you can declare war on them we are going to want to declare war on them before the war with Turkey ends and typically I would like to see at least the Turkey war end after completing Fodoratoi. That is 140 days after the war starts from this focus. We would have 220 days in which time to declare war on Turkey. So I think that's pretty good from this point right here. 41 days, we're looking at 180 days in which time we can declare war on Bulgaria. So that's enough because those two focuses are just 140 days. So I like that. This should work out really nicely. And we actually could not have justified until now anyways. So it works out. We just got our fascism guy that lets us justify war goals. I talked about this earlier. We do need to befriend the communists now. They became hostile when the EEE launched the coup, but we're gonna instantly befriend them. We want them to be buddies with us, and that will actually make no one our enemy in faction management. We'll get everyone at least friendly except the Republicans. All right, so we have 42 factories at the moment. Let's check and see who we compare with. I have a feeling yeah, we're at exactly the same as Poland. So considering where we started, I'd say that's pretty good. We're beating Hungary, I'm sure. Romania, we're beating. Turkey, we're beating. 
So we're beating about everybody now that at least we can pair with. So we have completely turned our economy around. As soon as we can get more economy, total mobilization, anything like that, that's going to boost us even further. And I think I will just wait until we can get total mobilization. It probably won't be too long into our war. Maybe once the war with Bulgaria starts, we might be able to pick that up around then. And that's going to further boost our economy since that will then put us at 0% consumer goods. And that will be absolutely massive ah so yes we will lose this consumer goods guy as soon as we turn communist so we have a little bit longer that we can use him all right i just bought a little bit more steel from france we can actually buy some rubber from them as well and it is time to destroy some turks we're all set we did abandon these islands but we are going to be defending here and here we're going to let them take into thrace we will lose a couple factories from that not too big of a deal. So we're gonna go ahead and do reviving the double-headed eagle right now. Once that finishes, we could at that point, eh, now nah, I think we'll wait until we actually take Turkey and revive Byzantium. All right, so we got two troops that have landed. Let's go ahead and destroy these right away. Uh, so, so you can see, man, 22 to 46 is the amount of troops that Turkey has. Of course, we have less than that, but our factory count is better. All right, so since they have a couple troops in launch right now trying to invade us, let's go ahead and raid them. And hopefully we can just obliterate them so when they go back home, they're going to have about nothing left. All right, and they're walking in. This is looking pretty good already. They've got three troops up here in the north that we can destroy. Let's uh, push there with three. We'll push here with two. With the rest, we're going to push here and try to uh, just completely push through as fast as possible. And we'll push this guy out near instantly instantly destroyed because our speed is just so massive and i love these guys all right we're still sinking their transports like crazy we want these guys to walk in that's okay thank you for committing five troops there i like it oh now we're gonna have another go at this All right, so we were able to push over the strait. Now they're down to 10 to 21 troops. They're not looking too hot. 173K casualties to 14K. We've got our air force over here too that is gonna be helping us to push over here. We've also only got 53 days now until our justification on Bulgaria is complete. One important thing, we do not want to actually capitulate Turkey until our justification is complete and we've declared war. We're also gonna pump out some more infantry here. Hopefully then we can hold a little bit of line here while our troops try to uh, file back in from Turkey so then we can capitulate the Bulgarians. If we cap Turkey before we declare war on Bulgaria, Bulgaria will get guaranteed and we do not want that to happen. I'm going to dump out some troops up here and... Let's just, uh, I'll just group them with these guys. We'll just do a fallback line, something like this. Um, I think it's okay if they take a deer nay. I'd like to just hold this spot and then we'll try to get the guys back over the straight from over in Turkey. All right, we're at 97%. So we don't want to take anything more. All right, we have our war goal. We can go ahead and push for the last point. And I think most of our troops are back here. The others will be filing in, so that's all right. Clear war and let's do this. There we go. For Turkey, we're just going to select all, hit submit demands, and then we're going to take their navy as well. And now we can just get the rest of our troops up here, and we will be golden. So we'll delete all these orders that these guys have already. We want these orders to attack. We can now revive Byzantium. So boom, and we still don't even have Fodoratoi. So we're, we're on really, really good timing right now. Once we get that, that'll give us plus 25% war support. And then hopefully we can get to total mobilization. That's going to be the goal. And we want to get that as quickly as humanly possible. All right, so now time to wipe out Bulgaria. And we have that beautiful purple color. I love it. Right, that about gets rid of all of our problems. Because now we're at 61 factories. We're looking very, very strong. We can now go ahead and pull off our trick. We can do that national referendum to communism. So we're going to say bye-bye to Georgios Cosmetis. All right, so hold national referendum. 
Politics will change. KKE becomes the ruling party. Communists demand the referendum. Now we get this goofy looking flag and this kind of goofy looking Nikos Zachariadis, the reluctant Stalinist. I do like his traits. He, he's got that plus 10% factory output. That's very, very nice. I think he reminds me of the, the giant from Disney, if I'm remembering correctly. Like his kind of bulbous nose and uh, teeth showing. Uh, he looks like a happy guy though. Uh, so let's get everyone up here and we're gonna fight the Bulgarians. This should be very easy. At least I'm expecting it to be. All right, so we're just gonna push for the major cities as fast as possible. All right, and we got, oh, you know what? I never used the bonus. The, I never used the cipher on Turkey. Uh, so that was kind of a fail. But uh, since we're fighting these guys, let's let's use it now. Uh, you know what? I wanna build a few civs actually. Let's get wild here. And get some sieves in our really nice infrastructure places. For that, we'll build more mills. More. 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 All right, so yeah, we're, we're cutting through them like a knife through butter. So, so far, not too impressed with the, the defense of the Bulgarians. Let's see, 727 to 5K so far. Uh, they are holding there. Impressive. All right, yeah, move out of Sofia. That would be great. That would be fantastic. Fan dabby dozy as the rambler says there we go beautiful so they moved right out for us easy capitulation easiest capitulation of my life all right so we're just going to take all states they have no fleet and there are no romanians up here where are the romanians uh, i don't want to find out let's uh let's see what we can do to push here before they make it all right and we got fodratoi so let's do neni kikaman next and we have outdated equipment. Let's get the better equipment. If we could just fast cap these guys, that would be really, really nice. I know last time the Soviets actually asked us to be in their faction about now. So right now they won't let us in. I'm not sure what the difference is. Soviets let us in. We want to be your friends. We're communists. All right, we got over 90% war support. Let's go ahead. Can't, oh no. They do not have more factories than us. Oh, uh, that's a fail. Okay, well, uh, maybe we'll just have to go to war economy then for a while at least. You know what? Maybe we can... Can we cheese this? We could fall back and let them take Bulgaria and then possibly get some big surrounds on their units. Uh, here come their troops. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. I think we bit off more than we can chew anyways. So let's let's just fall back and uh, we'll, we'll let them take some stuff. All right, they have all their lands back now and I'm wondering if once they take Bulgaria, if that will be enough for us to then actually go to total mobilization. So cross your fingers, boys. Total mobilization is not an option yet. Let's see, let's see if we can cheese it. Uh, we'll, buy, we'll buy these licenses, please. Yes, uh, this is rather cheesy. So if you don't want to do this, I understand. Okay, there we go. So it's going to cost us 14 civilian factories. And hopefully that will do the trick. Let's take a look. Haha, <laughs> yes! Total mobilization. Okay, so next, as soon as we have 150 political power, we're going to get to extensive conscription. Since the war will be ending soon, you know what? We do need to get a justify war goal on Italy. It's only 16 political power, so that's not too bad. Oh, and it's only 80 days. I have this terrible feeling we've forgotten something. All right, son. Son, I think you've learned your lesson. Okay. Thanks, Dad. gotta stop doing this as our world tension created increases i think then we might be able to join the faction because as you can see the world tension is a factor here so i'm thinking what we're, we'll, we'll do is we'll uh, concentrate some motorized here and we're gonna push through yambul and push here and trap these four units we have a artillery deficit still so uh, we do need to boost our artillery all right they push us back some it, it's all right i'm not too worried about it uh, once we start pushing them we should be in good shape so let's do it keep them pinned there we go we got that hopefully we can get that guy no one escapee all right but if we keep moving up we can probably trap varna uh, i don't want to go too far actually this is getting a little dangerous i don't want to get too greedy we can go ahead and switch to extensive now and there we go we got the first 
Encirclement destruction completed. So now we need to find another spot to do this at. We could push maybe through here. We can dump some more units out as well. All right, and there we go. We get a nice encirclement on the Romanians. Should be pretty smooth sailing from here on out, especially after we get these troops destroyed. And there we go. Not too bad. Let's just take everything, cement demands, take the navy, cement demands, and boom. And now we can join the faction with the Soviets. Since we're not at war, they are more okay with us. So now our justification is complete on Italy, and we're pretty much all set for war. We're looking really strong on our factories. I'm pretty happy with how this is shaping up so far. 0% consumer goods. We're getting some extra sieves to boost our output, our overall construction. Once Italy and the German Reich go to war with the Allies, we can really just take them down pretty quickly. So I'm going to get probably about four or five troops right here, maybe six even, in both of these tiles. So let's do that. And then we need 10 troops for a naval invasion. These ones will be perfect for that. So we'll get these down here. We'll set up some naval invasions on Sicily from there. So we're doing pretty good on ships. They're looking very strong. Some subs as well. Oh, and there we got some extra destroyers from the Romanian Navy. And so yeah, we'll set up all the rest of the troops that we have to spare. So that's only gonna be 13, but that will be the troops that will take Albania. We'll have 10 troops to hit Sicily. You wanna hit the southern side, so these three tiles right here, right under Palermo, well, this one here, and then uh, Syracuse. That's where you wanna focus all the troops and then spread out from there. Typically, from what I've seen, it's a lot easier to get naval superiority in this area, in this central Mediterranean Sea, rather than like like the Tyrrhenian Sea. Yeah, you want to just focus down here and then hopefully you can get naval superiority. Especially when the Soviets bring their fleet down in here, then that will boost our ability to get that. This is a curveball I did not see coming. The Mexican states joining the Allies? What? That's so frustrating. I suppose it's probably because of the tension being at 100%. And yeah, that's just not good. Hopefully we can still capitulate France and the UK without any problems from that. All right, time for war with Poland. We can declare war on Italy at any time now. Italy won't be distracted, but at least Germany will be since they are now at war with the allies. They're less likely to like send troops or fleet down in this area because they're gonna be busy. Wow, that is a lot of troops in these islands. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, we'll see what we can do here. Let's uh, get rid of these. I'm gonna set these and these as the areas we want to have under patrol. And just for added measure to see if we can get a quick naval superiority, let's get our air superiority and naval strike going in this zone and we'll declare war soon. So let's stop training as well. Our, tro our 13 troops here will be ready to go and our 10 troops here are ready to go. And then these guys are just holding the line. Since if they try to attack over here, it's not really gonna work that well because of that naval invasion penalty. And then as soon as we can, I'd like to get this infantry equipment designer since it does give 5% infantry division attack. It's kind of nice, nice little bonus. 5% uh, isn't huge, but I mean, when you're stacking bonuses on bonuses on bonuses, it's it, it turns out being kind of nice. I am not sure entirely how Molotov Ribbentrop will work if we actually declare war and call the Soviets in before that actually ends. Uh, I guess that's a little bit of an experiment then. So our troops are looking well organized. So let's go ahead and declare war. And let's call in the Soviets immediately. Okay, and instantly we we do not have naval superiority. All right, I'm gonna try to just hardcore push towards the ports so we can get the cutoffs here as soon as possible. And then hopefully these guys will be able to go eventually. 37% already, it's not bad. Uh, I think that the Soviets are actually sending some stuff in. So yeah, as you can see here, they're attacking like instantly. But that naval penalty is pretty nasty, 56%. And our troops are well dug in and well defended. We have a lot of anti-air. I'm going to at least add it to the motorized division now. And we'll see where that puts us. Okay, so we still have 378. I think that's enough to at least try to put it in here. That might not quite be enough for all the divisions. 
Oh no, it almost filled it out. So perfect. We don't really need to focus armored trains. We have a ton of them now. Let's go ahead and import from the Soviets a little bit. All right, and the sooner we can take these ports, the sooner these guys are going to be able to be deorged. So we are pushing them out nicely. And I think maybe we could go ahead and change now. So we have over, mm, well, let's get this first. I want that extra 5% attack. Like I said, it's not a huge amount, but it does add up. It's all about stacking the bonuses. Hey, there's the superiority. So, and we just are about to destroy these guys. Once we do, we can move over the rest of our troops to Sicily. And then from that point, we can really start heavily pushing up into Italy and destroying them. I'm pretty happy that this happened as early as it did, though. I think the Soviets uh, sent a lot of their fleet down and were really helping to push up that naval superiority. All right, there's one. Instantly going to try to push up and take this port. Some more troops. Okay, here's the big boys. Let's get out of here. I'm gonna tell them to disengage now. Okay, we got that territory. Let's uh, let's try to grab this port quickly, and we'll attack Palermo as well. And let's get all of these troops. We can move them down to one of these ports, and then that will allow a quick movement over here once we do take a port. At the moment, we still don't have a port, but we will soon. Okay, I'm going to try to do a quick attack, a lightning strike with the with our motorized, and we'll try to get into Messina and then across the strait really quickly. Okay, Italy did get to war with the Allies, so hopefully we can capitulate them rather quickly. Oh wow, that is a lot of troops. Alright, we may have to try to do a naval invasion then. Alright, so this is what my naval invasion is going to look like. I'm going to try to surround Napoli as well. Try to get into Anzio, get that surrounded. And let's go ahead and just use this immediately for that boost. If the Soviets get that, that's really bad. We really need all this territory for us. Soviets are getting pushed hard. So yeah, this did return to my control somehow. I don't know why, but it did. And we got all these German troops in here we have to deal with too. Ugh. And we just need Milan and we win. If we can just push that territory. Yeah, there we go, we got the... Well, if we're gonna have a puppet, we might as well transfer the territory. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right, so they do have the full fleet. So if we can annex them, that will be huge. Probably need to switch gears to building in their territory. I actually want Venezia to be destroyed because I want that for ourselves. Okay, and our infantry deficit isn't as bad as it was. It was getting absolutely horrible there for a while. All these German troops are in here now too, and that's really causing a lot of trouble. Every time we try to push somewhere, they just they counter it right away. All right, there we go. If we can just get a little bit more and take Venezia, then hopefully they will capitulate. Nice, we got Venezia. Now let's try to complete this encirclement and hopeful destruction. Looking okay so far. So now I'm gonna work on closing this pocket. All right, the Soviets aren't looking good, but neither are the Germans. Well, this seems to be going nowhere fast. So I think uh, maybe we should just push somewhere else. So as soon as we left, our allies are useless and lost everything. Pretty much as soon as we got out of there. Yes. Finally. All right, the rest should go down easy. All right, so next up, I guess we could try to push them out of here. So yeah, we'll just push them just a little bit and I should do the trick then. Oh wait, am I still licensing? I think I'm still licensing stuff. <laughs> oh no, that was so bad. I can't believe I never got rid of that. Okay, don't do this guys. Well, I guess I was boosting the Soviets to keep them alive. All right, this should capitulate them then. The enemy Italy. Yep, there we go. Oh, we got like 30 guns, woo. Uh, maybe we can actually push here. We can make a quick push, that'd be kind of nice. Maybe get up here into Austria. Don't mind if I take Vienna. Maybe we could even just straight up cap the Slovakians. So far, they don't really have a tremendous amount up here. Ah, uh, they're already bringing troops in, but we'll see what we can do. 
All right, next up, I think I'm gonna actually declare war on Yugoslavia. So it'll take 100 days, that's not too bad. Uh, we are struggling over here a bit. Hopefully, uh, because we're pushing here and we're gonna be causing them problems, hopefully that will make a bit of a difference. Yeah, we're gonna be able to capitulate these guys. Nice. <laughs> Oh, that's golden. All right, let's make a push for Berlin now. And hopefully while they're busy, while the Germans are busy, we can just sneak right in. Where are all the Italian troops? Uh, they only have 14 divisions. All right, well, we'll take control of all those guys. All right, so we'll just, uh, we'll have these guys hold the line here then. And reduce the autonomy for Italy to an integrated puppet. That should help with our mills significantly. And we should be able to fix our deficits now as well. So I think at this point, we're going to stop these attacks because we're so stretched out, we can't really push much more. So the Soviets are actually pushing back now. Now the problem is going to be, how do we get to the United Kingdom once we capitulate these guys? All right, I'm going to dump some more units out soon. Actually, yeah, let's just do it now. Okay, it's almost the end of... 1940. Yeah, I'd like to capitulate them as soon as possible because then we can get to dealing with the allies. So, ooh, nice encirclement here by the Soviets. Okay, so we have until March 3rd of 1941 before we have to declare war on those guys on Yugoslavia. All right, let's do an all-out assault. I think we're strong enough now. Still kind of struggling on guns, but we are taking some lands. All right, and if we can get to these ports, this entire front is cut off. We could probably just push straight for Berlin, too. All right, two territories to cut off the entire front. I think I lost my war goal. Oh, no. All right, so if we take Frankfurt and if we take Hamburg, I'm pretty sure this is over. All right, we have five days till that. What are we looking at? Okay, Germany still has a little bit to go. We've got to stop the attack just for a little bit here because so I do not want to capitulate them just yet so yeah we need them to join the axis and as long as they're not a major I don't think they will be I should have checked that though yeah they're not they're not big enough to be a major I think yes they join the axis beautiful and then we should be able to just push let's just justify straight up on Britain all right there we go liberation of Paris we got Vichy up in here uh, we're gonna take this stuff I'm gonna give stuff to Regno del Sud. We're gonna personally take Zadar. After that, we we puppet things. Puppet Germany. So now we need we need fleets. We're gonna take the Italian fleet, the Vichy fleet, and we do have a justification going on Britain. So that's beautiful. We are going to have to justify on Yugoslavia still. And this is disgusting up here. <laughs> we should be able to push into France very, very quickly because I don't think they have hardly anything. Yeah, 14 to 62. They don't have very much at all. All right, so we can now annex Greek Italy. We've built enough in their territory, and we're all set to go ahead and annex them. So, and now that we do that, we can then do a triumph for Italy, which is going to let us core all of their stuff, which is uh, amazing. But our justification is almost done. There it is. And I think we're good to go. The, we don't have this border defended, but it's okay. The Soviets will come down and help us defend that. They still haven't beat Finland. That's awful. But let's go ahead and go. And we are moving in on England as well. Get that force attack going. Uh, hit Hull as hard as we can. And we need to go for Paris right away as well. So we want all of these just beelining to Paris. And we have a landfall. Hull's gonna go down very soon here. We actually outnumber their fleet that's up here, and yet they're still, they were stomping us. All right, Paris fell. All right, so we gotta take some extra stuff before these guys will collapse. That's fine, I mean. All right, so now they're gonna get up there. Okay, there goes free France, or regular France, I guess. Well, this is looking pretty good. All right, we really need our troops up here, because now we're starting to struggle to push through. Oh, nice. <laughs> we need the Egyptian territory. We need Syria. We need Cyprus. Uh, we'll take Malta. We need Tunisia and Gabes. And then we'll need Yugoslavia. And that's all we absolutely need. Other than that, we can just, like, puppet some people. The Soviets didn't have that many points in this war. Oh, did I? I forgot to justify that war goal. <laughs> uh, then we can also move our capital to Constantinople or Thessaloniki. All right, well, let's move it. 
There we go. Our final justification is now done and way longer than it should have been because I totally forgot about the justification yet again. We actually don't want to call the Soviets in. It would be a bad idea. Because if they get any score, they could potentially take some stuff from us. I made like a million puppets from the last peace deal, so... The end of 1941? Yes, we will. So we're just gonna take everything. Alright, and now our final decision. Triumph for the Balkans. Woo! And let's take a look here. We have 126.26 million manpower. Well, not manpower, but eligible core population. And there's our beautiful, beautiful Byzantine commune with our leader Nikos Zechariadis. So that's how it's done, boys. Oh, that was fun, but that took forever. I really hope you guys enjoy this. Yeah, remember to leave a like. I've got a lot more coming down the line. A lot of things that I'm working on. A lot of things that haven't been seen before. Just wild stuff. Check out these other videos. That little clicky thing. Click that. Click that. Click those videos. Alright, thanks guys. See you later.